time. Time is something that completely and totally defines what it means to be a human, and it just, it kind of, it absorbs everything that we think about, because in the end of the day, time is the one variable that we truly can never control, and it continues to move no matter what we do. Um, and I think that's an important thing to think about when it comes to relationships and marriage, especially marriage. Um, because think about how do, when you hear someone's success story of marriage, right? What do they say to you? They say, oh, like my parents are so happy. They've been together for, what, 42 years. But the question is, when did the length of time become the quality of the time? Why is it that we use a quantity to qualify relationships? Um, and I think that is one of the biggest curses that we have kind of cast on ourselves. And that is one of the biggest pressures that I think people, especially young people, but people for a long time have felt, and especially in our generation, because it's difficult. Um, people are kind of stuck in this in-between of, do I get married early? Do I, you know, stay single for a while? Is it okay to stay single for a while? If I stay single, you know, what's going to happen? Am I ever going to find somebody? Do I really need to find somebody? Blah, blah, blah. I mean, it's just these questions that are, you know, kind of sitting on all of our, all of the youths of not just America, but the world. Um, especially America, because the technology is so vast here that, you know, we kind of have access to the entire planet in a lot of ways, which kind of increases our horizons and takes, you know, takes, it, it's no longer about the people in our town. It's no longer like if I find, you know, it's kind of the, something I talked about in another one of the videos, the concept of one in a million. For, an, you know, for people who have access to technology and things like that. For those of you watching this video, for those of you on Facebook, this and that, you, it's, it's a different concept. One in a million, not such a big deal. Um, which is also part of that pressure, that responsibility that we feel um, in relationships and kind of making sure that <clears throat> we choose a relationship that will last forever. And I think that is actually one of the biggest problems because we put that pressure on a relationship where we say, oh my God, this is it. If this doesn't last forever, which means till the end of our lifetime as we know it or as we're certain of, if it doesn't last till then, it failed. And that's also a huge reason why people get so upset when their relationship ends. You dated for three years, you dated for 10 years, or you were married for 10 years, you were married for 15 years, you divorce, you break up. But in this day and age, I mean, like marriage and stuff were all kind of in, they were put into place in a time period when we didn't necessarily live till the age of 80 plus. When, you know, when 40, 50, 60 years of marriage was not really possible. Um, but it's funny how such an old tradition is carried into a new culture, a very modern culture. Um, and so I think that's really important to keep in mind that, you know, if you dated for two years and you break up, it doesn't mean it failed. It doesn't mean you failed. It doesn't mean that you screwed up. It just means that it faded. You grew out of it. You both grew out of it. When you come together in a relationship, it's so much about circumstance and timing. You two just so happen to have met up at the same place at the same time, in a place where your magnets happen to connect to one another, and then you continue on the same path together. But in the end of the day, there's still two lanes. What you try and do is keep one another on that same path because your goals are similar. But we're human. That's unpredictable. And when you're talking about in the context of decades, I want you to think back in the past year, how many things have changed for you? How many things can you look at right now and say, this is exactly what I would thought it would have been? Not even just the past year, think about the past five years, five years ago. Are you exactly where you thought you'd be today? The good and the bad. 
I'm guessing that answer is a no. So, and I, I mean, also, if you're in your 20s, that's probably why, because it's much harder to tell the future when you are so young, because we don't have as much of a comparison. You know, we haven't been alive long enough to be able to truly compare our current state to a past state. You know, we've really only been an independent human as a 23-year-old. I've only been an independent human for five years since I was 18. That's when I developed my true independent identity away from my parents, away from the home. And that's not a very long time. Um, so I think it's important to recognize that relationships can still be significant even if they don't last forever. And most relationships won't last forever, and if they do, well, great. And I hope that they were fantastic. But just because somebody has been married for 40 years doesn't mean that they've been happy for 40 years. Important thing to think about.